What's up, YouTube? My name is Ian Sandusky. Welcome back to Let's Machine. We had some leftover brass from another job we did a little while ago, so I decided we're going to make some challenge coins. I'm going to walk you guys through how I'm doing this today. Um, if you have any spare materials sitting around at work, I guarantee you guys can do this really, really easily. Uh, as a side note, sorry I haven't been posting a lot lately. We've been absolutely swamped here at work trying to get everything done with real fan work, so we haven't been on a lot on uh, YouTube. But uh, yeah, today we're going to go through how to make challenge coins. Mine are a little small, just what I can tell what's running right now. If you want, you can scale everything I do in the, these drawings up, you know, 1.25 uh, scale, and it should be good. It should come out about one inch. The ones I'm doing right now come out about uh, seven eighths. So let's take a look. Let's see what we can do. So challenge coins. Here's my design. Uh, it's pretty basic. I'm just putting my company's logo here in the center, Lakewood Machine and Tool. Um, my outside diameter for these is a little smaller than I had intended originally, but I mean, I've already started doing this, so I'm just going to run with it. It's uh, almost 7 eighths in diameter, so big enough, to, you know, about the size of a quarter, a bit bigger than a nickel. So what we're going to do is we're going to face down this entire inside here as a pocket, so it sits about 20 thou lower than the rim. You might ask, what are all these little circles around the outside? Well, I want my coin to have ridges all around the outside. The way I'm going to do that is by using a 1 16th drill to drill all these holes around the outside. And since we're doing this in bronze, you can feed it pretty hard. Um, it'll be pretty quick. And so then at the end, all we'll have is this segment of the hole left around the edge after we've milled this all away. So it'll have ridges all the way around. So you can see I'm just going to spot drill everything first, um, pocket this out. Then we're going to engrave the inside here. Now I have two different engraving toolpaths I'm going to use. The first one is just an actual engraving toolpath. This is in Mastercam. You can find it in here somewhere. Uh, engrave. There it is. So in here it's going to go through. It's going to step over about eh, a couple thou the entire way. I also have it doing this because I want this to be a nice bold line. After that, it's going to go and engrave just as a contour with no offset around all these other lines. The other two places I'm going to run that engraving tool path are right here to clean up that inside of the rim, kind of using it like a chamfer tool. And then I'm going to actually use a real chamfer tool around the outside just to clean up the outside. Um, when we run this on the screen here, I didn't bother setting up the stock, but you can see everything's going to turn out just the way we want it to. See those little ridges in there? It's because I have it programmed as a uh, engraving tool, which has a one-thou tip. Realistically though, I'm not going to be using a real engraving tool. I'll show you what I'm going to be using in a second, but uh, it should turn out pretty well. So since our finished products are going to be uh, about 7 eighths in diameter, we're cutting our material. This is actually bronze on brass, like I said earlier. Uh, it's 3 eighths by inch and a quarter. So we're cutting it to one inch length by inch and a quarter. Uh, it's going to give us lots of material to work with. We can cut off the outside when we're done. We also don't need to make 5,000 passes to uh, cut off the outside. Uh, yeah, so you can see I'm just, I just belt it off the edges just to make sure it sits nice and flat in the vise. But uh, besides that, it's pretty straightforward. So for the engraving, I'm actually not using a real engraving tool. Um, we have a couple of them, but the tips are very sensitive. And you know, since this is just kind of a fun project, I don't want to use them. Instead, I'm using one of these. This is a one 8 drill mill. I believe it's from Durham Mill. But uh, you can see it's just got a little nice little point on there. Use them for chamfer milling, right? But since I burn out the edges on these a lot, doing actual chamfer jobs, I keep them. Because the tip is really good for doing engraving when you uh, have a job like this to do, or you know, you're just messing around. And you don't want to burn out your good end mills. So, you know, keep these on hand if you got them. You can also use a, oh, what are the folks here? You can also use a quarter inch, because uh, it comes down to a point as well. So it's really up to you in that regard. So as you can see here, I just milled a little step out of the inside of these jaws that we're already using for another job. Uh, that job's done, so it doesn't matter. Just put a little 1 8 step in there, more or less. Just going to pop that in there. Center it by eye. All the excess material is getting cut away, so nobody cares. Nice and tight in those aluminum jaws. I like aluminum jaws because then if you mill into them, nobody cares. Pin it down, make sure it's nice and flat. And away we go. So this is how they're coming out. It looks really, really nice. If you look, you can see that 1 16th drill I put around the outside 
is giving me exactly the kind of ridges I was looking for. Uh, I originally had a whole bunch of stuff, as you can see on the drawing upstairs in here. Uh, it just looked a little too busy. It was kind of smearing everything around. Um, if I was using a proper engraving tool, it'd probably look a little better, but uh, I kind of like the simplistic design now. You know, things change as you go along. Um, in regards to these outside ridges, I'm sure some people will say, well, can you go around with a 1 16th ml and just have it go in? Of course, um, you can do whatever you want that way. I like the way this is coming out. Uh, I'm not in a rush, these are just for fun, so um, if I was doing these for a production job, I'm sure I would do that. Um, for what I'm doing now, you know, it's easy, you don't have to worry about the ML breaking, the drill is just fine punching through there at 10, 15 inches a minute. Um, yeah, so that's how it's coming out. Next, we'll be flipping it, decking this top section off, um, and then working on the maple leaf engraving on the other side. We're going to do some surfacing on that side. So uh, let's see how that works out. So for the second operation, after we deck off the excess material, I'm going to be making these a uh, little over 1 8 thick, uh, probably more close to uh, 3 16 thick, so they have some nice weight to them. But we're going to be running uh, a program to actually make a surfaced maple leaf on the inside there, complete with my company's name and the established date. Now, the, uh, the ridges around the outside are already going to be there, so we don't need to redrill those, obviously. We will be milling all this exterior portion away, so we just have a coin left. Um, to draw this um, maple leaf here, it actually wasn't that difficult at all. If you've never drawn in surfaces in Mastercam, it's fairly uh, it's fairly easy if you know what you're doing. Uh, first off, this surface on the bottom here, the only reason I put it in there and this surface here are to use as check surfaces. Um, I want to tell my ball nose to stay away from there so that it only mills this section. I don't want it to touch this segment at all. So if I delete those, you can see what's left here um, for my maple leaf. So to draw this, the way I drew it is I drew the maple leaf exterior just flat. I took that and translated it using the, the translate uh, X form tool down in the Z 30 thou. Then all I did is redraw, well, I chose a random radial point here, and I drew lines to every vertex. And since I was drawing those from the zero point down, you ended up getting these real nice slanted lines. See that? Then to create the surface, again, very, very easy. All we do here, create surface. And this is a net surface. So all I'm gonna do is select this chain like that, and bam, there we go. So you can see it's got the angles I want to it. Now we went through and programmed this. I'm using a radial toolpath on this here. I'm gonna use a 1 16th um, flat end mill first to pocket this all the way to get in as close to this as I can. Um, this is just a fun project, so I don't care about completely sharp corners in there. I'll accept it's probably gonna have a little bit of a round segment in there. So I'll show you what we did here. That's fine. So the 1 16th is going to go in, cut it all away. Again, I didn't set up my sock, so don't take this as holy Bible. Um, and then that uh, 3 16th ball nose is going to go in with a radial tool path. So that means that everything's going to start from this point here, because that's the point I selected, and go down. Uh, I'm using about a 2,000 step over, 3,000 step over, so I mean, I don't think I'll see any real ridges. But if I do, it'll work with it because it's going to kind of look like a sunburst coming from the center. Afterwards, uh, I'm just using that same engraving tool from the first operation to go through and mill out all of these sections here uh, to get my engraving. And then I'm just going to run a chamfer tool around the outside just to make it a little prettier. So for the second operation, you can see here, I just made a uh, circle the same diameter, a pocket the same diameter as, uh, as our coin here in the center of the jaws. I put a 1 8 parallel in there when I milled them out, just to make sure that there's gonna be some clamping pressure on there. Now it doesn't matter what way we put this in right now, I try to line it up just because it's good practice. Oops. Crank her down. Give her a hit with a hammer just to make sure it's nice and flat. And now we're gonna be using this. So a one and a half inch uh, fly cutter. I really like it. I guess actually technically it's an insertable end mill because fly cutters only have one point. But uh, yeah, let's take a look. So now we blow it off. Oh, that is perfect. 
Absolutely perfect. You can see there, beautiful finish. Cut it off, there's no big burr. It didn't toss out of the vise, which can sometimes happen when you're dealing with uh, stuff like this. But yeah, that's absolutely perfect. So next, we're gonna use those same jaws. I mean, I could have done it the same operation. I don't know why I didn't, but I'm gonna put this back in there for the third operation. We're gonna pocket all of this out. So here we are after the final operation. Um, you can see the Lakewood machine in there came out real nice, as did the established 1988. But you can see we have some problems. Uh, the maple leaf turned out real well. It's that chamfer mill. It's, uh, it's too low and I left my lead in lead out way too far, so I ended up cutting into it. As well, you can see it actually went through and touched the entire face, and it's not really supposed to. But besides that, I mean, we just fixed that. I, we, I just fixed that in the program. Um, and hopefully we'll run the next one and it'll turn out good. Really, really cool how that uh, maple leaf turned out. As long as you take the time to do your surfaces in Mastercam, it's really, really easy to do. All right, let's run another one. So there we have it, there's the finished product. Um, you can see I bumped that chamfer mill out so it's not touching the face of that anymore. Yeah, it looks great. There it is, just like that. I, uh, I decided to go with that flat finish. The, uh, the other one was looking a little too busy, but yeah, there we go. So there we have it. That's how we're gonna make challenge coins. This is just a fun little project that I did just for something to do. I had some scrap material sitting around and it was something I kind of had popping around in my head for a little bit. Um, I think projects like this are extremely important. Uh, the fun projects that you're not gonna make any money on, that you know, you're know you probably never gonna be able to sell, but you wanna do just cause they're fun. I found I have learned so much more from doing little jobs like this and you know, playing around with surfaces, it's it's playing with things in the machining trade, be, not being afraid to make mistakes. And you know, if I mess up one of these, what do I care? It cost me about 50 cents of material at most. Um, I didn't break any cutters. If I break a cutter, you know, that kind of sucks. But there's very little risk and a lot of reward. Um, it's a very easy way to learn things. Uh, I haven't done surfacing in a little while. You know, I've done really big surfacing, but I hadn't done any little surfacing in a long time. So this was kind of a, a chance for me to play around with surfaces and get comfortable with it again. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes that way. You know, the, the things you learn are definitely gonna outweigh any of the negatives that come from wasting a little bit of time on a Saturday afternoon messing around with uh, a pet project. Uh, if anybody's interested, I'll definitely post these uh, up on my website. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can always email me. My email is on my profile page let'smachine at gmail.com. Uh, again, this is Ian Sandusky. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe below. Thank you very much for watching.